Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some of the really awesome changes that are coming to professions in Dragonflight, as well as some of the really cool recipes that Blizzard has already released, and some of them are very, very unique, and some of them are kind of a blast from the past. So hopefully this video will be very helpful, especially if you're somebody who has been a little bit behind in the alpha related news or just Dragonflight as a whole, because you know, not a lot of the big YouTubers or anything are talking about professions exactly, and all of the information is kind of spread out between articles. So hopefully this will just give you a good sense of the big changes coming with Dragonflight. Also, as a disclaimer, I do have to say that I do not have access to alpha, so all of this information is from other people's live streams, other people's photos, wowhead, blizz themselves, etc. So, of course, all of this is subject to change, or, you know, we might get new information even the day this is uploaded. But hopefully you guys enjoy, and here we go. So before we get into the really cool recipes, I just want to talk about four big changes coming to Dragonflight. Now, these are a little bit of the more well-known ones. You guys probably already know this, but I just kind of want to speak my opinions about them. And of course, keep you updated if you haven't heard about them. But the first one, which is very, very exciting, and this is the increased stack sizes. So a few days ago on the Thursday of last week, Blizz released another article regarding professions, and one of the major points is increased stack sizes. So any of those crafted or gathered reagents are now going to stack up to 1,000 instead of 200. So, you know, in Shadowlands terms, we have like Mirror Root, we have Nightshade, Death Blossom, we have Alethium Ore, we have, you know, Desolate Leather, all of that sort of things, even Enchanted Lightless Silk. Basically, all of those sort of gathered or crafted reagents are going to stack up to a thousand. This is insane because, I mean, if we take that in today's standards, basically five slots of items are going to be condensed into one. Also, the crafted consumable side, so we have like potions, we have optional reagents, finishing reagents, which are going to be a new reagent in Dragonflight. Instead of having a stack size of 20, it's now going to be a stack size of 200. So yet again, this is even better from the 200 to 1000, because this is a 10 times increase. So if you guys restock, you know, 200 potions, that's now going to take up a single bag or bank slot compared to taking up 10. So inventory management is going to be a lot better. Moving on, we also have a new bag slot. Now this was actually leaked before we got all this alpha information and people just assumed it was going to be a fifth bag, which is awesome because in today's standards, you know, we have 32 slot bags. Who doesn't want 32 more slots? However, it was actually revealed that this is a reagent bag slot, which is a brand new bag type coming with Dragonflight. And as the name suggests, basically it's going to hold all sort of reagents. So like I just talked about, we have those reagents that are now stacking up to a thousand. So all of those are going to go into this dedicated bag. Now, the best thing about this is that this bag is going to be at least 36 slots, which means it is a bigger bag than normal. Uh, currently, the biggest bag we have in the game is 32 slots. So that is four more, which means we will be able to hold 36 thousand items in this single slot. If we just want to compare how crazy that is, currently if you have a guild bank, one guild bank tab can hold up to 19,600 items. So this reagent bag at 36 slots with a stack size of a thousand items is going to be able to hold 1.8 tabs worth of the guild bank of items. So yet again, inventory management is going to be great. Now, of course, keep in mind, we are getting like the quality system with Dragonflight. So, you know, we're going to get five different types of qualities. So we really do need that extra bag space. But even for like old world and everything, this is going to condense how much materials we have, which will just be very nice for storage. Moving on to another sort of quality of life, just like the reagent stuff, we have an update to prospecting and milling. Now, these are tied to the inscription, which is milling herbs for inks or pigment. Then we have prospecting, which is tied to jewel crafting, and you prospect ores for gems, essences, depending on the expansion. 
And so what they are doing is now reworking the system. So you mass prospect slash mill in a single click which to anybody who is doing inscription right now is absolutely insane. If we wanted to do another kind of example, currently in today's world, if we wanted to mass mill 15,000 nightshade, that would take us five and a half hours to mill it and then actually craft it into inks. So the ability to just straight up mill it or prospect it all in a single click will be amazing and save us a ton of time. Now, technically, this is not confirmed as we do not have jewel crafting in the alpha yet or any sort of in-game actual confirmation or confirmation from the devs. However, if we look at that article, they use the example of Shadowlands prospecting when talking about this change. They also use the line, these recipes will allow you to select which herb slash ore you wish to mill slash prospect from that expansion. So I am assuming this is going to apply to all expansions. So if you are somebody who is storing, you know, 37,000 Kapyrite from Pandaria in their guild bank right now, hopefully in Dragonflight, you can get rid of that in a single click. But of course, we will have to see when jewel crafting comes to alpha. And the last really big change I want to talk about is the new crafting stations. Now we heard about these whenever Dragonflight first was launched, but we finally actually have some news about them. And so the biggest thing people were worried about is, you know, what exactly do these stations do? You know, are they required to actually sit at? And the answer is yes. So that could be a good thing for some people, a bad thing for others, but it does state in the article that you will be able to find these crafting stations outside of the major city. So you're not going to just have to be in like, you know, the Orbos equivalent of Dragonflight. I assume it'll be, you know, maybe one or two in each zone in kind of like the main flight path areas, you know, maybe like the heart of the forest type of thing in Ardenweald or like the hero's rest type of thing in Bastion, but you know, the Dragonflight version of that. But of course that's all speculation, but it is confirmed that you do need these stations in order to craft. Now this is going to kind of transition us into the really, really cool recipes that we're getting, but a huge bonus of this is that engineering is finally going to be relevant. What they state is, this is the actual example that they say in the post, is that, you know, they may realize that many alchemists may wish to craft fresh potions or other concoctions on the spot for their allies, and so the engineers will be able to craft remote crafting tables for, you know, alchemist or whatever to use. So basically engineering is going to have the power of making portability. And I kind of compare this to like auto hammers from Legion, but on steroids. A lot of people like auto hammers because it's a portable anvil to repair their gear. And so, you know, engineers are getting this version, but for crafters. So you know, if you're a crafter who likes to do some quest or whatever, depending, of course, on how long these portables, you know, items are able to be used for, engineering might have a really, really good market on their hands. And so this transitions us into the really, really cool recipes, which I am very, very excited about. Now, there are a ton of different new recipes. I'm going to only highlight a few just to kind of show you the different variety that we're getting, but I will make sure to link the post in the description if you want to go through it all. But the trend that we're kind of seeing is that a lot of professions are being reworked, as in they are getting items that traditionally we wouldn't really think about. So for example, we have alchemy. Now I understand that the cauldron is a thing that exists in Shadowlands, which is basically like a group potion. However, it's soul bound and it's just kind of hard to craft. Like, unless you are a raider, you probably don't craft it yourself, but alchemy is actually going to have feast this expansion. So they're going to have different types of cauldrons or feast that they will be able to lay out for their allies that is going to give different effects. So this is not exactly super new, but it is very highlighted. There are multiple varieties of these instead of just the cauldron, which can be very exciting. Now, the last thing I wanna highlight about alchemy are incenses, which are, they call them mood altering incenses, but basically it's like an AOE potion that you can throw on the ground and everybody in that little area is affected. 
Now, one really cool incense is that it's going to increase inspiration, which is that stat crafters need in order to get that bonus proc for quality. So the ability to just throw one down for a bunch of people, for your alts or whatever, if you have multiple accounts, could be really awesome. Also, apparently there is a potion that increases crafting speed. Moving on, we now have engineering, which I kind of have already spoken about, but to just say it again, they are going to be able to craft portable crafting stations, which are required for crafting. So this will be very, very nice as a actual good market for engineering for the first time in a while. Then we have inscription, which has a few interesting items. The first thing to note is that missives are back in Dragonflight. Assuming that they work the same as Shadowlands, they will be able to, you know, be applied to gear to, you know, control different stats. Then we have the return of Dark Moon decks, which are not new, however, they are a great source of gold at the start of expansions. But they do have a new interesting item called the Scroll of Sales. And the only thing this says is that it summons a vendor of general goods. So this seems to be like a portable vendor. So of course, we don't know how expensive this item is going to be, but this might be really, really cool for farmers, especially if you're like a transmog farmer or something. If you're mid run, you could throw one of these down, vendor your items and keep running. And you don't have to worry about like going out the instance and doing a mammoth or any sort of things like that. Then we have jewel crafting, which jewel crafting is pretty cool. We're getting a lot of different gems. Not only are we just getting like kind of like the blue quality and the green quality like we have in Shadowlands, we're also getting the meta type of gems back of epic quality. We're also getting a list of trinkets, but there are two very exciting items. The first one is this weird ring, which is bound on account, which is called the lucky loop which all it says is that it increases 12 luck. Now we have not heard of that stat before. They claim that inspiration is the stat that, you know, gives you that extra procking chance of quality, but who knows? Maybe luck is like a drop rate type of thing. We're not exactly sure. We don't know exactly if like how to craft this item, but it is interesting that it's bound on account. Also a cool thing is, is we're getting new cosmetic items and one of them is called the Rhinestone Sunglasses, which is a little bit interesting, reminds me of a certain item in this game, if you know what I mean, but cosmetics are always great. Now the last profession I wanna talk about is tailoring. Now there's nothing really specific with tailoring that's really, really like unique. There are some really cool toys being crafted with tailoring, but I did want to highlight the new line of bags. It seems as we are getting a 32 slot bag as well as a 34 slot normal bag. And then we are getting two different versions of the reagent bag, which are both 36 slot. They are two different qualities. Not exactly sure if that's going to matter at all, but we are getting four new bags this expansion so far. But yeah, that is kind of the items and different system changes that I wanted to talk about. Now, of course, so many different professions are getting really cool things. I didn't want to highlight everything because that would be a pretty long video, but feel free to go check out that post in the description if you want to go read it all for yourself. There are some really cool items in there that I just am not talking about. But as always, everybody, let me know if you are excited for Dragonflight. I think everything looks really, really cool. And hopefully, you know, maybe I'll get access to Alpha or Beta one of these days which then I can give you some more in-depth alpha looks. But I appreciate you guys watching this video. Join the Discord if you want to be a part of our amazing community. And as always, everybody, have a great day.